Hi, I'm Bryson and today we're going to be building a capacitive charger to recharge dead batteries. All of us have seen how car batteries tend to have a short lifespan. They're rated at about three to five years and some manufacturers can last up to 12 years. However, due to the two most common issues, either overcharging or undercharging, they tend to build up what are called sulfate crystals on them. What we're going to be building today is a capacitive charger that will be able to break off those crystals, dissolving them back into the, elect the electrolyte and recharging our batteries. All right, so this capacitive charger is based off of a capacitor. So this is what makes this charger unique, is it's not going to be the standard trickle charger where we're just feeding in voltage until the battery's full. As you can see, this has a 45 microfarad and a 5 microfarad capacitor in one. And the way it works is we pull current and power from a direct AC line and it, we use that to charge up this capacitor. Once the capacitor is full, we discharge it directly into the batteries. And what that will do is it's going to create a pulsing effect. So once it fills up, it discharges. And then once it's empty, it, it fills up once again. And so this pulsing is what's going to cause these crystals, the sulfate crystals, to break off from the plates and it's going to allow current and um, electricity to flow in a more free way through the battery, uh, resulting in you having a, a, a larger charge capacity um, and basically re restoring the battery. Um, so that's going to be a critical component. Um, you can salvage these from different other um, electronics or you can buy them new. We also need what's called a bridge rectifier. Now, basically what, the way this works is there's four diodes in it, and it's going to convert direct or alternating current, excuse me, to direct current. And so all of our power needs to be in direct current because that's what lead acid batteries are, are in. So after, after we have those two essential parts, we're going to need some other basic things. This is a multimeter. This is just a convenience so that we can actually read the voltage of the battery without having to do that separately. It can, it can be in the unit. This is a timer unit so that we can leave it and, and let it charge for a, a set period of time and not worry about overcharging the battery. You've got a, a simple switch that's going to allow us to switch between the 45 and the 5 microfarad. Uh, and then we've just got the different wiring components and the casing. Uh, we're using a pretty thick, pretty hefty plastic case. So this charger is specifically designed for lead acid batteries. That's your standard car battery. You're going to find them in just about every vehicle. I would n we would not recommend using this on any lithium, nickel metal cadmium, nickel metal hydride, any other types of batteries. This is strictly for lead acid batteries. Now, another part over here that's really important, because our, our uh, bridge rectifier generates a lot of heat, we need something to dissipate that heat. And that's what this simple heat sink is. Really all it is is a quarter inch um, bar of aluminum that we've drilled some holes in and we're going to use that to dissipate the heat. Okay, awesome. So first thing we need to do is look at our schematic. So here you can see there's four main components. We've got the timer, we've got the capacitor, we've got our switch, and we've got the bridge rectifier. So as long as all those four main components are in order, this should be pretty easy to wire. So you can see, first thing we want to do is kind of trace where our power is coming in and where it's going to be going out. So if you can see here, we start with the AC in. Now it's going to go directly into our timer. Now, as long as our timer's on, it's going to pro provide power through the bridge rectifier into the capacitor. And what that's going to do is fill that capacitor up. Once that capacitor gets full, it's going to discharge back through the bridge rectifier into the battery. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take our wires here, these are going to be our terminals that we're actually connecting to the battery when we're all done. And I'm going to wire these directly up to the bridge rectifier because this is where our output is going to be at. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Now the next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be wiring up the capacitor. Now this is going to be connecting to the three-way switch and to the timer. So I'll go ahead and do that now.
All right, so now that we've got our capacitor and our switch and part of our timer wired, as well as we've started on the bridge rectifier here, I'm gonna move on to wiring in our multimeter, which is gonna show us the voltage of our batteries. And I'm gonna wire in the rest of the bridge rectifier, as well as finish up the wiring for our switch, our timer, and get the AC power in all wired in. Okay, that should do it for that one. Perfect. And then we'll go ahead and do one more hole on this side. Now that we've got everything wired together, we want to make sure that we're checking our wiring to make sure we get everything wired up correctly. It's a little bit jumbled right now. We need to go through and double check that we got everything wired. So if we can start, it's really start at any point and just double check it with the schematic. So our capacitor, so we've got the 45 and the 5. The 45 needs to be hooked up to the three-way switch directly. So that's right there. Looks like we're good as well as the 5 also needs to be hooked up to the three-way switch, okay. And then that center part of the switch, the center lead, needs to hook up to the bridge rectifier. You can see we got the center lead right here. That guy's hooking up to the bridge rectifier. And then from the bridge rectifier, directly across from the center lead, we should have the positive. And you can see there, there it is right there. Positive is gonna be going directly to out to where the battery is, which will connect to this guy. And then our negative, um, our negative lead is just going to be coming from a different, the point, uh, a different point from the bridge rectifier, which is right here. It's going to be diagonal from the positive, and you can see that's wired up correctly right there. Now let's take a look at our timer. So our timer should be hooked, uh, it should be hooked up to that last lead in the bridge rectifier, which you can see it is right there. It's directly below the positive, and that's going to be hooking up to the. Uh, I believe that's, uh, yeah, the neutral. So that's going to hook up to the neutral on our timer. Now also hooking to the neutral is going to be the input power. So that the, the neutral on, you know, your AC power in. And then we got our line in, which is going to go directly to the timer. And then our last one, which is going to be the lead on the timer, or the load, excuse me, that's going to the capacitor. And that's going to the common on the capacitor. It's not going to either of the, the two banks. And then also, just another side note, in with our battery is going to be hooked up this little multimeter, which is going to tell us the voltage of the battery. So once you've double and triple checked that you got your wiring correct, you can go ahead and move on to assembling, putting everything in the box, screwing everything down. We still need to cut out the hole for this, um, as well as cut out the hole for the bridge rectifier, which is going to mount right here. Okay, so we went ahead and cut some holes uh, in this box here. So we cut a hole for our switch down here. That's where our bridge rectifier is going to go here. And then we cut a hole for the timer. It's going to be right here. This is some pretty thick plastic, so it's a little bit tougher to cut holes in. Timer is going to go in right there, just like that. And then we're going to go ahead and assemble everything now. I when I double checked the wiring. Looks like I had wired the switch wrong, actually. I had confused, um, which is the, the common on this thing. And so that's why you always want to double and triple check your wiring. So we'll go ahead and finish assembling everything and go to that point.
Okay. Make sure that these guys do not want to be touching. <laughs> All right, and we're done. That's the finished project. In the next video, we're gonna be using this same charger uh, to demonstrate how we can revive dead or, or damaged battery, batteries. Um, and if you have any questions or comments in the meantime, go ahead and leave them below. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in buying one of these and not building it yourself, uh, there are other people who build them and, and sell them, and we'll link to some of those in the description. But uh, again, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you at the next video.